Professor Paul Majewski is an internationally acclaimed scientist, explorer, and leader of over 50 scientific expeditions to polar and alpine regions of the world. He has received numerous honors, has over 300 scientific publications, and two books on climate change written for the public. I sat down with Dr. Majewski to discuss his research and thoughts on the future impacts of climate change. My name is Paul Majewski, and I'm director and a professor in the Climate Change Institute at the University of Maine. I'm a glaciologist and a climatologist. For the last few decades, uh, I, along with my graduate students and many colleagues, have focused on the use of ice cores from all over the world. Ar the Arctic, the Antarctic, Himalayas, Tibetan Plateau, the Andes, New Zealand. We focus on these records because they provide us a very, very robust view of past climate. They tell us about past temperature, precipitation, shifts in atmospheric circulation systems, increases and decreases in greenhouse gas levels, a variety of other pollutants, changes in the extent of sea ice, volcanic activity, forest fires. They're just a remarkable way of looking at the past climate system and actually also calibrating it to the modern climate system. Along with the teams that I've worked with and led, we've made probably three groupings of major discoveries in the climate system. The first was the identification that the climate system does not oper operate in a, always in a slow, linear way, that it can operate abruptly. In less than 10 years or in less than two years, you can have dramatic changes in temperature, precipitation, atmospheric circulation. The second big grouping is the impact of changes, natural changes in the climate system on past civilizations, leading very, very quickly to drought, increased levels of uh, sea ice surrounding a region, both of which led to and contributed to obviously major changes in civilization in those regions. And the third, and perhaps most important, we provided the perspective that now allows us to understand that the climate system, the chemistry of the atmosphere in particular, is completely different than it has ever been in the past. Increased levels of greenhouse gases, but perhaps more importantly, rising faster than they ever have before, plus with a combination of increased levels of radionuclides, toxic metals, uh, humanly engineered chemicals, and a whole variety of things that have never come together in the Earth system before to produce a climate similar to what we have today. Uh, if I had to sum up what I thought was the greatest uh, climate change challenge for us right now and in the future, I, I'd use the word security. Uh, as the climate system changes, largely as a consequence of human activity, we will experience and already do experience dramatic impacts on human and ecosystem health. We are beginning to see increased frequency and magnitude uh, of extreme events. We're seeing rise in sea level, uh, which is going to become more and more apparent over the next few decades and centuries. And we're seeing tremendous differences in the distribution of water over the planet. As a consequence of climate change and increases in population, there are going to be regions of the world that are critically, critically at risk as a consequence of drought. Society and has uh, a lot to think about for the future, and, and even right now there are big changes occurring already, and I think there are two big concepts that we need to really embrace. One of them is education. We need to understand much more as, uh, as the public about what these changes are. They, of course, warming is part of it. There is much, much more uh, in addition to that warming and the impacts of that warming. The other thing that we need to think about carefully is what are the opportunities for the future? There are many things that we will not be happy about in the future, but there are opportunities. Building seawalls to the appropriate level rather than redoing them uh, in a hundred years. Looking for better ways to manage our economy and considering the fact that our economy in fact might be based on water in the future and not oil. I'd like to take this opportunity to provide the delegates and the policymakers with two messages. The first is, please do not underestimate the potential for climate change in the future. There may very well be significantly more than one would assume there could be based on the models. The second is, do not assume that the climate system over the next few decades and centuries will operate in a linear, gradual way. We know from the past that it could change very, very abruptly, and we need to have models and thinking in place that allows us to deal with both linear and abrupt changes.